So some of you may already know that my first ever placement last year was in a school and I can't believe I actually haven't done a video talking about what counselling in school was like. So yeah, I even did it as part of my presentation for one of my modules and I can't believe I never spoke on it. So this video is for those of you who are either interested in knowing what my placement experience was like and for those of you who might want to work in schools as a counsellor. I personally did my counselling with 16 to 18 year olds in a sixth form. It was part of a secondary school, they had a sixth form and because of my course my limitation is 16 years old, I can't work with people under 16 so I was only counselling children 16 to 18. Of course this is not applicable to every single school, this was my personal experience so obviously don't go in expecting that this is going to be the same everywhere. And also remember I was on placement, I'm pretty sure a school counsellor that's like hired and has already got experience and everything would probably be done a bit differently so just keep that in mind as you're watching. Let's get into it! First, you don't work alone, I didn't work alone, of course I was on placement so they were very supportive. I regularly spoke with the educational social worker. There was also another school counsellor who worked part-time and there was just a well-being team in general. They had a pastoral team. Some schools may or may not have a well-being team, but in this day and age, I feel like every school does now. I got to know the other counsellor. She was lovely. She recommended me her supervisor, who was also really amazing, and I did a video about her. So keep in mind, there's a chance that you won't be working alone if you're in a school. You know, you'll probably get to know other teachers if you're there primarily and most likely you maybe have your lunch in the staff room so you can mingle with other teachers so yeah and of course there should be like a hierarchy of support where maybe if you need to report something that a client has said that's worrying you can report to certain people so you definitely won't be working in isolation second thing to keep in mind is times times are very complex so one thing is that the timetable is more rigid, it's more strict because with my clients, they were given to me based on their timetable they, where they didn't have a class. Some of them did come to me during their lessons. I don't know why that was allowed, but their schedules are going to be very strict. I don't know if it would be up to you to decide, but for me, obviously, they were given to me because I was on placement. As a result, I couldn't just switch them around whenever I wanted. Another thing in terms of time is that lateness is common and unfortunately where in most other places you would have a strict 50 minute session, in a school it's more unlikely simply because between lessons they might be coming from a really far side of the school because when the bell goes at let's say 11 o'clock most students are still walking to the class for maybe two to three minutes depending on how big the school is so by the time they get to you maybe it's almost five past and you still have to keep a schedule especially if you have another client coming in so chances are your sessions are not going to be 50 minutes on the dot because of that so just keep that in mind don't berate your clients if they come late because that's likely to happen in a school also no shows are very common and i'll get into that later but yeah a lot of students might not might just not show up so I didn't have access to the register but you might so I had to ask the educational social worker like every morning if my clients were in in school that day or if they weren't and she would report back to me but if you can have access to the register ask for it so you can see or if you have somebody you can contact to find out if your clients are in or not in school or not that helps a lot and obviously you will be working school hours so you will have to adhere to school hours school holidays and so on and so forth so likely you'll be working from like 8.30 to like maybe 3.30 or 4 depending on how long the school day is and you'll have the same break and lunch times as them and of course if you don't have clients and you've got extra time on your hands you also have to keep in mind that you will have big breaks in between sessions for Christmas holidays maybe exam seasons other half terms Easter and whatever else so also keep that in mind because obviously normal counselling sessions outside of a school setting is weekly, like there is no pausing. But I think in a school setting, there's going to be a lot more disruptions. In my placement, there was days when clients didn't come in because schools were closed because of strikes, which was out of everybody's control. Sometimes obviously sickness, students don't come in because they're sick, got holidays. And that does sometimes kind of have an impact on the relationship that you've built with clients, especially Christmas holiday, where it might be like two or three weeks easter is like two weeks so you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you're working in a school as well that it's not going to be just a fluid weekly appointment so the third thing i want to speak about is the fact that i feel like you have more independence i definitely had a lot of independence but i i don't know i'd like to think it was just the school that i went to they didn't really have any policies or rules in place or any documents for me to sign they were kind of just looking at me like so 
what do you need us to do for you like do you want this do you need this like what hours do you want how many clients do you want and it was just very much like yeah here you go it wasn't like a job where you go in they're like okay you're gonna have this many clients and like my current placement is like you need to have four clients minimum you can't have less than i had a lot of independence and a lot of autonomy like i had to come in with my own forms for the clients to fill out there was no risk assessments there was no forms that they gave me it was just like yeah just tell us what you need and we'll give it to you i think that's more to do with the fact that they were unprepared they're unprepared for placement students they've had placement students before but i don't think they have anything in place for placement students which is lacking on there and i feel like they should do something about that because most placements will have something in place for you policies rules to follow documents to sign maybe but they didn't have anything so yeah <laughs> i had to give them stuff to sign from the university which they did but yeah, I'm sure when you're working as a hired school counsellor, I'm sure you have obviously a lot of things to sign and policies in place and rules that you have to follow. The fourth thing to keep note of is your office. So me, I had a shared office. It wasn't my office fully. Even the school counsellor that was already there, she worked part time. So she was in like three days a week, I think, and then she went to a different school. So her office was shared with somebody else. My office was like a room I was in once a day. And even then, as much as I was told that this was my room, not many other people were told. So sometimes I'd go in there and there'd be like a student in there or there'd be someone trying to take my room because in, not enough people were told that this room is taken on Wednesdays by a placement student and it was just really frustrating but just keep in mind if you're working part-time in a school you, you might be fortunate enough to have the room all to yourself the only one with a key but if this depending on how many rooms the school has it might be a case of you're sharing the office and it's not completely yours and to be honest my office was in a really bad place because it was like near the hallways and people would walk past and i didn't have as much privacy as i would have liked for myself and for my clients even though they promised me they would put blinds on the window but they didn't so just make sure that if you have an option pick a side of the school that's more isolated somewhere where not a lot of people walk past or where there's not a lot of noise like if the bell rings like it's not right next to a classroom where people have to walk past and make lots of noise that's something to keep in mind the fifth thing that i want to talk about working in a school i noticed a lot of common issues which might be helpful for you to know so if you do plan to work in a school common issues that you might see come up a lot is like the effects of the pandemic and how it impacted a lot of them in various ways some of them developed anxiety as a result of the pandemic some of them gained weight as a result of the pandemic or lost weight and that's affecting their self-esteem and their confidence social anxiety just getting back into the swing of things motivation uh, or lack of motivation like a lot of things came up as a result of the pandemic school pressure home life came up a lot like parents siblings poor relationships with them or negative relationships with them some of them not many of them some of them had suicidal ideation some of them experienced a lot of trauma identity for some of them and anger issues here and there and of course talking about where they're going to be going next in life so moving on to the next stage of going to university or looking for a job like those kinds of things are probably going to come up and attachment types will probably come up as a result of talking about family life as well so that's just something to keep in mind as well the sixth thing is that there is literally an unlimited number of clients to have like schools are usually very big and at the school i was at they had a long 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 waiting list and i think the chances are there might be a long waiting list for you as well now therapy is more normalized in schools like you can literally say to your friend oh in my free period i'm going to see my therapist and it's very normal so just expect that there'll be an unlimited number of clients that you can have and as far as i'm aware there wasn't any specific number of sessions they had to have some of them obviously stayed with me for the whole time i was there some of them stayed only for a few sessions a few weeks whatever but there's definitely an unlimited list of clients and if you're at the school for multiple years of course every year there'll be new students like constantly coming in even students joining halfway during the school year so there's literally an unlimited number of clients at number seven, I want to speak about the job market. So I had a quick scan through like Google just to see what kind of jobs there are in terms of part time or full time positions, because I kind of had the feeling that there was a lot of part time positions. 
but actually when I look through there's a lot of full-time positions more so than part-time so the good thing is if you want to be a school counsellor maybe you want to ease yourself in or maybe you want to do a side hustle or maybe you just don't want to put too much pressure on yourself you can definitely have the option to do part-time or full-time like I said the counsellor that was working at that school she did part-time at one school and part-time at another school so you're not really going to be out of options in terms of whether you have to do full-time or part-time you can probably negotiate with the school depending on how many students you are able to take on at a time as well so there's lots of options in that sense and the last thing I want to talk about, number eight, is that a lot of students are referred by either their previous school or the GP or somebody or a parent or someone. So they're usually referred. Most students don't voluntarily come to therapy. So you'll find that because of that, there's a different level of engagement that comes with people who are referred to therapy rather than people who voluntarily choose to come to therapy not saying that they won't engage or that they'll be rude or that they'll just sit there and stare at you but i've noticed that there's a difference and there's a different level of intention you can just tell that you know they're not as involved as they're not as interested because they've been referred and as a result it might take a bit more time for them to kind of look forward to coming to therapy or start to see the benefits of therapy because they're so like reluctant or hesitant to kind of give their all and because you're kind of having to guide everything because they never really Really wanted to be there in the first place so just something to keep in mind and I will talk more about this in the next video which is going to be about the differences between counseling adults and counseling young people because now I've had experience with both I feel like I can speak on it a bit more so be sure to watch that next so I'll see you in that video bye <laughs>